Hey folks, Lewis here from Shooting Up North. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody is well. What you're about to see is a podcast called MLW Rewind. It's a podcast that I host with a good friend of mine, my podcast partner in crime, George Mackay. So MLW Rewind, you can catch this podcast on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network YouTube channel, as well as George Mackay's Straight Talk Wrestling YouTube channel. So I want to thank BQ and the Impact Lounge for allowing me to put this podcast up here on the Impact Wrestling YouTube channel. It's not going to be a regular thing. It, this is a one-off uh, one off thing. I'm just trying to show everybody what else I'm doing outside of of the Impact Lounge. So BQ, thank you for allowing me to upload the this podcast, MLW Rewind, to the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. And on this episode, we review the latest episode of MLW Fusion, as well as interview the interview queen herself, Alicia Atut. So if you like what you see after you're done watching MLW Rewind, head on over to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network YouTube channel or Straight Talk Wrestling YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button or, or head on over to both. Head on over to both YouTube channels and hit both subscribe buttons. That would be even better. So enjoy. Hope you like it. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you very much. And again, enjoy MLW Rewind. going on MLW fans your host your boy George McKay back in studio again today with my podcast life partner my co-host my paisano if you will Lewis Carlin what's up brother and eh, not too much not too much is up today except we got endorsed by Court Bauer that's what's up actually we got a nice little endorsement from Court Bauer today very very uh, happy if Court, you're watching. Thank you very much for the endorsement. Uh, we really appreciate it. That was really cool, man. I, I really, uh, I caught me by surprise, but I really appreciated that, man. Absolutely. And when uh, when Lewis uh, shared it uh, uh, privately with me first, and then he obviously retweeted it, I uh, kind of geeked out as well. So, Court, thank you very much. We appreciate the love. We are uh, officially five episodes in, but um, you know what? Like you put in your post, a podcast for MLW fans by MLW fans. So I'm going to go steal that for today, and let's make that trending. Hashtag MLW fans for MLW fans. Now, um, today's episode, Court Bauer may not like us very much because we do have some stuff to say, but we're honest, for real. And at the end of this episode, like we've been tweeting for the last couple of days, we have our pre-recorded interview with the one and only interview queen, Alicia Autut. She sat down with us on Tuesday, right before this week's MLW episode, and we broke down everything from Selena De La Renta to her, her feud with Richard Holiday, to even more. So, Selena, if you're watching, you want to come on the show and give us your version of the truth? Because every there's three sides to the truth, as Lewis knows. There's one side, the other side, and the actual truth. So, Selena, now is your chance to spit your truth on MLW Rewind if you want to join us. Alicia gave us the time. We are pleased to have her as a guest. Selena, the door's open to you, if you want. I mean, I know sometimes you're a little busy. And I called you out on the fact that you didn't pay. Yeah. You didn't pay. I don't care what anybody says. You never buy, no viable proof. Where's the receipt? Even if she paid with her dad's credit card, like you tweeted to me, you would have a receipt. I sent somebody money today for an a, a interview I booked and I got a receipt. So all I'm saying is you can get a receipt, even if it's with somebody else's credit card, just saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually invited her on the show via Twitter, but she did not respond to my tweet. So, well, Maybe once she sees uh, the interview with uh, the interview queen, she might change her yeah. tune. She might want to have a platform to share her truth. Yeah, I mean, MLW fans, buy MLW, MLW fans for MLW fans. So, Selena, come on the show. There you go. That's right. All right, let's get into this week's episode. So, at, at, at the start of the show, um, uh, there was a review of all the promos leading up to this Caribbean strap match between Holiday and Vega. And um, then it went into the graphic, the beginning, the intro. And right in the middle of that intro, Contra interrupted it. The uh, leader extraordinaire, Joseph Samuel, 
uh, just talking all kinds of stuff about injustice and the revenge attack that they did on Contra from the previous week. Um, and also how Davari uh, was a broken man. And now Contra has rebuilt him. I uh, thought that was a little, uh, a little interesting, how they spun that. He was broken. We've rebuilt him. Now he's a machine of death. Um, sure. Okay. Uh, he's only had one match that I've seen. Doesn't look like a machine of death, but definitely did impress me. I mean, mind you, that match was kind of a little bit of a squash match. But regardless of the fact, um, we now know that Injustice and Contra are fully aware of what's happening. And now that the leader of Contra has made himself, um, I guess, part of this whole thing, now it's the stakes have upped. The ante has upped, if you if you will. Would you not agree on that, Lewis, now that Joseph has taken time away from his busy schedule to address this situation in a little bit more detail? Oh, absolutely. Well, first, I just want to say, every time, anytime Joseph Samuel cuts a promo, I think it's fantastic. I think he's fantastic as the leader of Contra. He cuts a great, intense promo. And I love how you never know when they're going to cut in. You know, it could be in the beginning of the show, it could be in the middle. They always seem to hack into a back into a part of the show and Joseph Samuel uh, cuts this amazing promo. But yeah, I mean, he says he's got soldiers in the shadows, I think, waiting for waiting for injustice. So injustice needs to watch their back. Uh, Contra, is, <laughs> Contra is looking for them and Contra is going to get them sooner or later, man. Well, and as we'll touch on a little bit later on the show, uh, there was a rebuttal from one half of injustice. So um, the first match um, in this week was um, match of the night. I'm going to go ahead and state that right now. Uh, this was a match for the AAA Cruiserweight title. This was our boy Zenshi versus Laredo Kid, the current uh, AAA Cruiserweight champion. Uh, what can I say about this match? But ugh, all kinds of speed, uh, flips, inventive and creative styles all around. It's, what's cru it's what Cruiserweights should look like. And it reminded me of the WCW Cruiserweight Division of Old with the Who Two Guerrero matches, uh, the Eddie Guerrero matches, um, Chris Benoit stuff, Jericho, early Jericho, all that stuff. This, this match brought me back. And uh, one highlight for me was that over the apron, like where Zenshi put the brakes on and then he somehow turned it into a 619 from the bottom rope. Just fucking insane. The skill level that this dude has. He is no joke, hands down, one of the best cruiserweights I have ever seen. And to put him in a match with the Rado Kid, this match should have been the main event. It should have not been uh, this early on in the card. But if you're an MLW fan, you got treated to something earlier because the rest of the episode was kind of a steady decline. But we'll get into that for sure. But what were your thoughts on this match, man? Because like I said, there was so much fun for a fan in this match. You took the words right out of my mouth. This should have been the main event. This was by far the best match of the night and of the show. And um, Zenshi is just, like you said, he's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. He would hit the shooting star press off the apron and hit it standing up on a standing Laredo kid to the outside. Holy fuck. I don't normally curse, but holy fuck, man, that was that was insane. And when when Laredo Kid um, ended the match with uh, going up to the top rope, I'm like, oh my god, what are they gonna do here? How can they top what they've already done? And then he hit the Spanish fly and and then he got the win. But this was just absolutely a fantastic match. Zen Shi, Laredo Kid, two amazing talents, and they had an amazing match. And um, like you said, and like I agree, this should have been the main event. And I agree, it was a steady decline uh, after this match, unfortunately. Absolutely. And one other highlight that I want to bring up was that um, that snap nair from the floor to the top rope. The right oh on the top rope. Then she just, I don't know how the hell he got up there, but he got him, caught him in a snap nair, brought him down. And I really thought the match was over. I thought, holy shit, we're going to have a new AAA champion. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Luckily enough, Laredo found that extra gear to kick out. Now, what was interesting after this match, though, is that he cut a promo and he said he wants to be a double champion. And he's going after one individual in MLW. Yeah. And that would be the yeah. reigning, defending man of the hour, my boy, Leo Rush. Yeah, and he yeah. wants a shot at the middleweight title, and I don't see a reason why he can't. Yes, Myron Reed is due for a rematch. I want to see Reed versus Rush too. We've talked about that in depth, but I can wait for Reed versus Rush too, so I can see Laredo Kid versus Leo Rush 
for the MLW middleweight championship. 150%. Yeah, I think they're staying away from Leah Rush, Myron Reed uh, for the time being. Definitely Laredo Kid is going to be the first challenger. Could be a title for title match. Um, I don't think Leo Rush would lose to Laredo Kid. I think Laredo Kid, if it's title for title, I think uh, Leo Rush is, is going to be the double champion, not Laredo Kid. Uh, but um, one thing I wanted to ask you, Laredo Kid got cut. His mouth was, he was bleeding out of the mouth. Did you see where he might have gotten a hit where he's that, um, where he well, might have got hit that cut him open? I, I... Yeah, there was a lot of Pele kicks throughout this entire match. There was okay. crazy amounts of kicks and strikings. There was backward bicycle, bicycle kicks, all kinds of stuff. I believe there was a Pele kick on the side apron towards the ring entrances uh, about, I want to say, eight minutes into the match where uh, Zenshi went up and caught him. And I believe he caught him when okay. he wasn't really prepared for it. And I think the heel of Zenshi's boot caught his lip, if I'm not 100% okay. mistaken. Is, is, that, is that why uh, Laredo Kid hit him with a stiff, uh, stiff forearm to the jaw? Oh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed. Hundred percent cash. Okay, okay, feet. there, there we go. Okay, that was one. That was like, wow, that's a stiff forearm. It's like probably got a little pissed there. Okay, no, I, I wasn't sure exactly where it, where it happened though, man. Yeah, for sure. And then um, we, as we go, and also it was weird during that promo. There was a little flash of contra in that promo too. I thought they were going to interrupt that promo too, but yeah. it did not happen. It flashed for like three seconds, the contra logo, and then it disappeared. That happened a lot throughout this match or throughout this this episode this week. I thought for sure Contra were going to see Joseph again, but it, it did not happen. But they were they kept flashing every promo. They flashed it a little bit, and it was uh, it was an interesting uh, concept of what they were doing. I, I'm not sure, but it hooked me in for a little bit with that. Anyways, uh, then Myron Reed cut a promo addressing Contra, uh, stating Contra. I love this part of the promo. The promo was great. Myron Reed, anytime he's uh, spitting some facts, it's fantastic. But I, this is the one part of the thing that um, intrigued me the most. He uh, he thanked Contra for starting the evolution of Myron Reed. And I fucking loved that line. I swear all the time. So I'll add a little extra stank on it because Lewis doesn't swear. It's so all swear for him. I fucking loved that line of that promo. Thank you, Contra, for starting the evolution of Myron Reed. Just put some stank on it, man. Yeah. Like that was, that I was thought that promo was fucking great. That uh, was terrific. He'll say it's time for war with Contra. So I don't know. They, they, they're they going to need some backup. I don't think just him and, and Jordan Oliver are going to be enough to battle Contra, though. I think they're going to have to get another member unless unless they keep doing sneak attacks like, they, like they've been doing, man. Well, maybe there's maybe there's a plan for a sneak attack with a new member. Maybe Injustice will get a third member back. We just don't know yet. It's not our time to find out. And this is one storyline that I can't uh, I can't see past the first couple of moves right now. I, I, I we all know the end game. The end game will be Injustice Contra in a ring. We just don't know which three members of Contra will face three members of Injustice. And I, I'm saying three members because I believe there will be a third member. I don't know who it is yet. Uh, there's a lot of potential people within the MLW roster, but there's also a lot of great free agents out there. And the wonderful thing about MLW is that, as we saw today with another match later on down the card, there's cross promotions and inner workings there as well. We saw an impact star on MLW in this week's episode, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. But there's a potential that there could be some more cross promotions. Who knows? We could see some MLW alumni return for one night only. There's a lot of guys that have left MLW and gone on to AEW, gone on to Impact, gone on to do other things. What's wrong with bringing them back for one night only? They did that with Brian Pillman. They can do that with somebody else. It's in the cards, and I'm, it's a great time to be a wrestling fan because it gets the cogs turning, gets the wheels turning. So it's not a bad idea to think that there could be somebody from another promotion coming over to maybe help Injustice in the war with Contra. What not that hard. Schedules are free up. What about Trey Miguel? I have for some reason I'm thinking Trey Miguel. I know he he just returned to Impact Wrestling. I don't know if he has a contract or anything with them, um, but uh, could you see him as a third member? I, I would personally. I would love it. I mean, I know he's got history with uh, Myron Reed, uh, but I think he would be a great third member of Injustice. Right, but he's also uh, he's also got uh, a little bit of history. I mean, Davari. When I saw when we saw Davari return, he only returned for kind of a one off thing. But uh, I believe there was also a history with Davari when he was in Impact as well. Not maybe a, a fulfilled history, but there was a little bit of a beef there as well. So the enemy of my enemy is still my friend. So if Myron Reed's enemy is uh, Trey Miguel and they both share a common enemy in Davari, why not unite for one night only to take 
Contra down a peg or two. I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, like you said last week, when you said Trey McGowan, my eyes went wide as saucers. So I, I definitely think it's something that could be done. And also, there also obviously is a, a, another reason that they could get Trey McGowan so easily. And uh, her name is our, Alicia Altoot, our, our guest coming up. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I want to, I'll, I was like, I'll, I'll, hopefully he'll say it, but I don't want to, I don't want to say it. But, but you said there's their, Trey McGowan and Mary Reed, they, they were feuding with each other. I thought they were, um, I thought they were they were, they were buddies. I thought they were tag team partners for for a while. They were tag team partners for a while, but I believe there was uh, when he left. There was a uh, okay uh, okay storyline kind of bad blood work. So oh, okay, okay, I got. That's you. why the enemy of my enemy is still my friend. Like you took the whole Zunzu thing, you took the wind out of my fucking sails again. Like, what are you doing? Okay. No, no, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But but back back to Trey. I thought the, so. Trey Miguel and Alicia too. They're still uh, they're still an item. I thought they. Uh, I thought they called it quits. I thought um, Alicia Toot um, tweeted a while ago that it was over between them two. Not not that it matters, but I was just, well, it matter, just curious. But they're still they're, they obviously shared uh, a relationship for oh. a bit of time. Okay, yeah, no, and they're still close friends. And when he returned, she posted a picture on her Facebook of her yep. kissing him, saying, yep. uh, "Congrats to my friend." So yep. there's still no, I saw that, yeah. there. It's not all I'm saying is, is it's, it's possible for Court Bauer to pull out the old checkbook and say, "Hey, Scott Tamore." How can I rent Trey Miguel for one night? Yep. Okay. It's possible. There you go. Anything's possible in this day and age with all these promotions working together, even if they're not yep. working together. And we saw that with obviously what's happening with AEW and Impact, but we also saw that the previous week when Mel Mortis arrived and it was a squash match with Brian Pillman, who is under contract from AEW. So it's possible, is all I'm saying. Yep. Anything is possible, man. Anything is possible. All right, let's talk about some of these other not-so-hot promos. Uh, again, this was a steady decline uh, after the Myron Reed promo, but uh, the Von Erichs promo. Uh, the graphic leading into uh, Hawaii was uh, more exciting than this promo. Their dad was there. Uh, one of them had an axe. The other one had, I believe it was a shovel. And uh, they were talking about how they have unfinished business with Tom Lawler, yada, yada, yada. I get it. All it reminded me of was that song from when I was a kid, the the Lumberjack Waltz. It's a Canadian song. If you don't know it, you don't know it. But uh, yeah. that's what it reminded me of. And, um, you know, since we're on the subject of the Von Erics, we do have to discuss one thing. It's not something that I know Lewis wants to discuss, but I said I'd address it, and I don't lie to people who pay attention to us. So we have a, a fan on uh, Twitter, Tabby Cat, and uh, he brought something to our attention. And Lewis is shaking his head. He brought something to our attention that um, – the Von Erichs you're, you're, you're not, really bringing uh, this up, aren't you? You're really bringing are, this up, aren't you? We are, because you know what? <laughs> oh, okay. I see your point, but I also see his point. I don't want to take too much time on it, but we'll take like... Nah, okay, yeah, no, no, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Just because I said I would address it, and I don't lie. I, I said I'll address it, and I will. I think oh, he's right in terms of keeping kayfabe. Should be updating your Twitter profile. And the Von Erichs both still say they're the MLW Tag Team Champions. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, but he, he found it a big deal, and his opinion is his opinion. And I think he's not completely wrong. I think in the terms of kayfabe, you should be updating your Twitter profile. You lose the titles, you lose the titles. You know, um, if you're going to put something like that on there, just update it after. Just go in and, and delete it while you're on the crapper. It takes like three seconds. It's, it's gone. So all I'm saying is in terms of kayfabe, uh, it could be updated. So if the Von Erics are watching, dude, change your Twitter information, man. You're no longer tag champs. You're going to go out there and cut some wood and you're going to shovel some some dirt and you're going to apparently go back after the titles. Great. Wonderful. But just stop while you're doing that and you're taking a break and drinking lemonade, just fucking update your Twitter profile. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm leaving it alone. Lewis, do you have anything to address or you want to move on? I don't think it's really that big of a deal. I mean, they just, they forgot to update their Twitter. I mean, I, uh, I was, I when I was interviewed, I was going to address it. That's all I said. And I'm addressing. Okay, well, uh, you know, that, yeah, it's true. When I was I was interviewing Rohit Raju, Impact Wrestling, I he after he had lost the X Division title, like it was four weeks afterwards, and he still had on his profile X Division champion. And I questioned him about that. He goes, "Oh, I just I forgot to delete it. No big deal. Okay, you forgot to delete it. You, I'm just letting you know. You go delete it now. But I don't know. Maybe the maybe the Von Erichs, uh maybe they don't use Twitter that often. Maybe when they get back on, uh, they'll uh, they'll they'll update it. But um, not, not that big of a deal. Not well, that big. Got a long way to cut down some wood and shovel some dirt. Get ready. Yeah, they have to shovel some dirt and 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 listen to, listen to Kevin Von Erich um, mumble about stuff. <laughs> With a stogie in his head. I got a hard car. I got to get butter. 
I, I get, listen, I get it. They're the Von Erics, they're a legacy in wrestling. They're a family legacy in wrestling. Um, and the, the father should be appreciated because he is the last Von Eric, literally before his. Oh son. yeah. Oh, but the, the don't fact- get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love Kevin Von Eric. I grew up watching Kevin Von Eric. Um, great, great talent, great wrestler, huge Von Eric, Kevin Von Eric fan. And, uh, the feud with the Freebirds and everything. Uh, there was a match Georgia Championship Wrestling against Jimmy Snuka, which was fantastic. Big, big Kevin Von Erich fan. Absolutely, me as well. I, I appreciate the Von Erichs and I love them, but let's call it spade a spade. This promo was not their best work. Um, they were enjoying nope. their time back nope. home, and that's great, but yep. give me a little something. Make me make me want to believe that you want to get those titles back. And I just didn't yeah. feel the belief. I didn't feel it. And right after that, those parks cut a promo which I don't even know what was happening. Even the translation I, was I, all kinds I, of head scratching. So these two promos were a forgettable part in the middle of a show that had already kind of peaked at that point. And again, not to take anything away from MLW because we're MLW faithful. We're going to watch next week. Um, they, they sometimes put out great weeks, sometimes don't. And, and that's like every product. But WWE hasn't put out a good week in seven years. So it is what it is. Um, but, you know, let's just hope that they can bounce back from this week because it was not their best effort. But there was a couple, you know, snippets of stuff. There was a Gino uh, Morana. He arrived back to watch Holiday get whipped. Former member of Dynasty. I thought that was pretty cool. Is it G- Gino Medina? Gino Medina, yeah, right? Medina Morana. I, I, I could. It was oh, okay. really, really fast. I didn't really hear okay. the name 100%. So Yeah, I think it's Gino, Gino Medina. Gino Medina. Yeah. Medina. Uh, he arrived. He came back to watch Holiday, quote, unquote, get whipped. So that was pretty cool to see him return. Former member, of Dynasty. yeah, it was cool, cool. But but as as we we'll, as we found out later on, he didn't even show up to watch uh, Richard Holiday get whipped. No, nowhere but, to be seen. But we'll, we'll get on. We'll get to that awful match shortly. So I don't know why that that was in there. If he's not there, there was no intention of him ever showing. Yeah, up. I'm yeah, not yeah. sure about that either. Uh, another promo. This this episode was filled with a lot of promos. Another promo. Max Kruger, you know, vowing to take down Hammerstone. We're gonna see that uh, Barclay. What is it? Barclay brawl. Yeah, the back backley brawl. Backley brawl. That's gonna be next yeah. week on MLW. So that's next be week. Good. Yeah. It's always good to see Hammerstone and Max Kruger because the last couple matches have been enjoyable, but they've just been very quick because they've been trying to keep the whole. Neither one of them is you know undefeatable. So this is gonna be exciting to see how this plays out for sure. Uh well, you know, they keep they keep calling Mads Kruger. Don't mean to cut you off, man. Sorry. But they keep calling Mads Kruger you know, this monster, this undefeatable monster. He's had two matches against well, Bud Heavy and another um I don't want to say the word jobber, but but jobber and um another uh another jobber. So he two matches where he ran right over them and then it was the match with Hammerstone. So you really can't say he's an unbeatable monster. He hasn't really faced anybody. Like Mil Muertes, like I said, like I brought up um two weeks ago. At least he defeated um Pillman Jr. So that gave him some credibility. So I- I'm not sold on Kruger being an unbeatable monster because he has a deep, deep voice and he wears a mask. So but you can't um, but, but you can't, you can't that? Have the time in the promos. You really can't. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. I, I have to turn the volume up on the computer. <laughs> oh, I feel like we're shitting all over a great product, and we, we shouldn't. But it was no, a no, rough go. Um, I did enjoy uh, the Tom Lawler promo. He addressed the ACH attack that he didn't do it. ACH just couldn't get it done. I was really hoping to rehear Ach, but I did it. Yeah, I was. I was disappointed we didn't hear Ach. I was like, come ah. on, say it, say it. This is ah. going to be a, a weekly thing. Ah. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but, but what about this, though? Right after that promo, they announced that all the sponsors for Filthy Island had uh, had pulled out because of the attack. And now, apparently, Tom Lawler can't pay for this extravaganza. We're going to see it in two weeks. So what the hell is Tom Lawler going to do if Filthy Island does not have the money? And the announcer said it the best. Um, he said, do we have another uh, fire fest on our hands? I thought that was genius. I absolutely thought that was genius. It was perfect timing. Um, I love the fact now that apparently Tom Lawler, the filthy island, might not happen because all the sponsors have pulled. You did some shady shit, bro. You attacked ACH when you shouldn't have, and now you lost everything. Filthy island may not happen. And whose fault is that, Tom? Yours. Remember that. Well, I, I think Selena, I think Selena will come up with the money for uh, for Tom Lawler. 
Well, she owes him. So we, 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 we turned the favor. We turned the favor exactly. to Tom Waller. Yeah. Right. You know, you're not going to get a title shot anytime soon, but here, let's make sure Filthy Island goes off without yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's why we, we got to get Filthy Island going. I'm, right. I'm curious uh, to find out uh, what Filthy Island's all about. Though, man. I am too. That's why we got to Listen, I, if, if he starts a GoFundMe page, I will gladly donate $3. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll donate. I'll I'll match that. I'll match that. Three dollars. Six dollar donation from that's, MLW. But $3. but it's but just so just so Tom Lola knows it's three dollars Canadian. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah no Adrian, fuck that shit, bro. Three dollars Canadian. Okay, hundred percent. All right. Well, then we get into the uh, the next match on the show. Uh, uh, tag match between Violence is forever. Dominic Greeny and Kevin Koo versus uh, Impact's TJP. The current uh, X Division champion and uh, Buku Dao. Uh, winner gets a shot at Los Parks next week. Um, uh, Violence is forever kept this match incredibly slow. Uh, they looked stiff, they looked uninterested. Uh, you know, there was a couple moments of speed by Dao and TJP when they tried to do stuff, but then there was an awkward double submission in the middle of the ring where Garini wouldn't let TJP get him in the appropriate hold, and then they fell on top of Dow, who had Ku in a cross face. And there was a lot of just the storylines weren't really meshing in this. I don't know if the four of them sat down and discussed this match before they went out there, but it didn't seem uh, as polished as it possibly could have been, considering there were three semi-veterans in that match. Uh, I'm not going to blame anything on Dow. I thought actually Dow sold it well. Um, with Green, when they cut the ring in half, Green and Koo, I thought he sold, you know, the bumps and stuff he took well, and he got those bright spots, those hyped up moments. He he did well, but I just feel like this this was not um, not where it could have been caliber of, of an entertainment. They could have done a lot more cool stuff with this, but I don't know what happened there. But uh, regardless to say, uh, TJP and Dow pull it off. Uh, they're the new number one contenders. They got a shot at Los Parks next week, and TJP cut a promo and said, "Stick with me." I will lead you through those parks. So, yeah. And, oh, since we're on the subject with TJP, congratulations uh, on your upcoming uh, new addition to the family. I know Arya Blarik is, is pregnant. So, congrats on that. You know, you're expecting your, your new baby there. That's awesome. Congratulations to both of you. I hope the baby's happy and healthy, for sure. But let's get back to this match. Lewis, what are your thoughts on it? That was my pretty much my rundown. Uh, not impressive whatsoever. Violence is forever. There was nothing violent about those two fucking guys. Garini, Garini looks... Just god awful. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, this, this was a very sloppy match. Well, TJP, it was clearly out of the four, he was clearly the more most popular out of all of them by far. Yeah, by good. far. Very, very. Use a good word. You say that it wasn't polished. It wasn't polished at all. Um, one thing I don't know if you noticed at the end of the match when TJP hit the frog splash. Dow was just sitting there, and the referee had a tap on him and pushed him. You got to cover the guy so I could count, right? Did, did you notice that? Did I you did. see that? It, I did. Okay, I, that, I, that was I, awful. You've got. There's got to be so much work to be done. You're going to put this kid on TV. He's got to know his spots. He's got to know. I mean, the, I mean, it's it's like Court Bauer was like, "Oh, look, the ref is 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 pushing him to cover," but you know, screw it. We're just going to leave it on TV. It's, we we got to. We want to make TJP and Dow the number one contenders, but that looked just so awful. I mean, we had a um, a heel ref, a a re a heel ref in the in the uh, the next match. I mean, but this match, this ref got involved, and there was nothing said about it. You know what I mean? It, it looked it, it looked. What am I trying to say? It, look, it just looked terrible, man. It just it's looked hard. terrible with the referee having to tap Dow and then actually literally push Dow onto onto um it was I think it was Kevin Koo to, to make the cover and then count to three. Oh, great, you won, you won. And uh, because I I I I pushed you onto the cover because you didn't realize after TJB hits that frog splash, you're supposed to cover the guy. You're supposed to cover the guy so I can count to three. But you're not at that stage yet. You know, he even like when he hit the frog splash, he looked over at him and he did the sign like cover him. And the kid still looked like a deer in the headlights because he got caught. He's like, yeah, he's like, what? Like, what am I supposed to do? To <laughs> you're not supposed to watch a match while you're in the match. Yeah, he's like, yeah whoa. <laughs> Like he's like suddenly he went to fan he went to fan mode. Well, he's just sitting there going, "Wow, that was great!" Yeah, and he's like, "This is awesome." <laughs> like, okay, come on, right now. Right. Okay, one, two, three, yay, yay. Uh, yeah, definitely not, not the bright spot. It would be hopefully by the time they face Los Parks next week, 
we get something a little bit exciting because I feel like uh, Los Parks and these two and TJP and Dow can do something great if the match is polished. So hopefully the four of them sit down, uh, dissect something amazing, or the five of them because there there could be that extra Los Park that interferes. Um, regardless of the fact, hopefully they um, they get it done. And uh, they, they show us a redemption match for the following week. But, yes, TJP was the brightest spot in this match, hands down. Garini, he needs to go. Uh, Kevin Kuhn needs to go back to training. There's work to be done. Violence is everything. Is not a good name for two guys who do nothing violent. Just saying. Well, violence is forever, I think the name is. Whatever. Violence is doesn't forever. fucking matter. Violence is forever. Yeah. Violence it doesn't matter. Everything. It doesn't matter. I knew you were going to correct me, and that's okay. I saw you. As soon as I said it, I yeah. saw you looking through. Oh, now I'm going to fuck George again. I'm going to correct him again. That's okay. I'm using <laughs> yeah, I, I, made a comp I made a comparison of the referees. Uh, I, I think that was um, a poor comparison. So so I apologize to everybody about that. Uh, it's a poor comparison there, comparing this referee to, to the match three referee. We're going to talk about the match three referee. Uh, but still, this um, wasn't wasn't a very good match. So right, but this the, the next thing for me was entertaining. King Mo cut a great promo. Almost as good as Tom Lawler's ah, from the week before. I love this. To MLW and any sports authority out there, stop low key from wrestling. Ban him from wrestling. He's a broken man. And they had him actually cut the promo in a hospital. I think, I believe, like the concussion <laughs> of fucking Ward. And I thought that was fucking great. I love it. I love it. Because if you don't know the hit YAMLW history, uh, King Mo whooped Loki's ass quite a bit of time ago. And um, I haven't seen King Mo in a minute, but he's back. And he came with fire on this one. Loki should not be wrestling. He's a broken, broken man. But yet the Loki we saw two weeks ago that knocked out butt heavy in eight seconds does not look like a broken man. So I hope that where this is going is Loki versus King Mo again. Because I love it. I thought this promo was perfect after that sloppy, sloppy tag match. Didn't, didn't he say that Loki signed an autograph, but he signed his name backwards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, say, he signed e equal. He signed equal. Equal. <laughs> and I just, bravo to King Mo, man. I think you're going to yeah, that was good. That was, okay, that was, that was good. That was that good. Was great. I thought it was yeah. hilarious. No. And now, I guess we'll get into... Yeah, now we have to get to the main event. The main event. The match that yeah. Lewis, Lewis and I were excited for. The Caribbean Strat match. The promos leading up to this match were fucking beautiful. They built everything perfectly. They even mentioned how this was the Strat match that Vega wore in the battle with Stone Cold back in the 90s. And right before the match, Richard Holiday cut a great promo saying he watched that match from 30 years ago. And um, I loved it. I, I was ready for it. I was so excited. Um, they came out, and it was just probably one of the worst strap matches I've ever seen in my life. There was nothing. There was a couple whips. There was a couple straight-up strap pulls. There was a double clothesline. Um, Richard Holiday shadowing Vega as Vega hit three out of the four ring posts. And as he goes to the fourth ring post, um, the ref was blocking him. And it was a ref that I recognized because I'm a basketball freak. Uh, and I wasn't sure. So I had to Google to make sure it was the right guy before I was wrong. I was like, fuck, is that fucking Tim? Is that Donnie? I couldn't, I wasn't sure. So I Googled it. And sure enough, it was the ref from the NBA refing scandal back in 2007. Guy that got busted for shaving points in games so he could bet on the games and make moolah. That's who the ref was. So I did enjoy that part. Um, with the fact that the, the ref that fucked over Vega was the ref that fucked over the entire NBA. Um, and I loved how uh, during the promo uh, at the end of the show, uh, Richard Holiday, so uh, obviously Holiday won because of the ref blocking the post because the Vega went to throw him out of the way. Richard got thrown into the way, yada, yada, yada. But I did love the promo at the end where he says, uh, uh, Tim, you called that down the middle. And he says, yep, just like the Lakers and Spurs at 07, everything is on the up and up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I did. I thought that was a redeeming quality to an other than otherwise a shitty ending to a, a relatively weak. Uh, the, a lot of the episodes for this year have been steady and they've been great. This was not a good way to um, uh, end off January. One hundred percent. Your first three episodes were decent. They were great. They were B minuses and B pluses from us. 
uh, this one will not get that grade this week. I will be completely honest with me. Um, and then at the end, Vega interrupts uh, Holiday, And I loved Alicia. The best part about this was Alicia sold it so well. Uh, when Vega came in and interrupted, she looked genuinely scared. She sold yeah. it well. I, I loved it. But regardless of the fact, um, Richard Holiday, still your Caribbean champion, from just one of the most bloodiest, brutalist strap matches ever. Sarcasm. Nothing, mm -hmm. no blood. No blood. Um, Lewis, what's your thoughts, man? This was just awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> this was just awful. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to rewind that because here on Rewind, that's what we do. I'm going to say, yeah. Lewis, what are your thoughts? And I want you to give me a little bit more of a dramatic pause, okay? So, okay. <laughs> Lewis, what were your thoughts? This was just <laughs> awful. <laughs> yes, Lewis, yes. <laughs> Tell the people why. This was, Tell the people why. This was awful. First of all, first of all, all due respect to Savio Vega, he's 56 years old. He's going to be 60 in four years. Okay, so he's, he's not Savio Vega from 19, what, 95, 94, 95, when he was feuding with uh, Stone Cold Steve Boston. Second of all, you're not going to make me believe that um, Richard Holiday is going to hit him with the strap and hurt Savio Vega, who's wearing a very thick leather uh, vest. So you're not gonna sell that. You're not gonna sell that to me that he's getting hurt with that vest on. I mean, it's a strap hitting a vest. It's not gonna hurt. Uh, I'm sorry. Do you agree or you disagree? You disagree with that? Oh, I completely agree. He never. Yeah, it's that's not gonna for hurt. obvious reasons. Like you said, he's 56. You can't take those yeah. little bits on his back anymore. You, you can't. I mean, Holiday took a few, but but um, the crooked ref thing, I think, thought was awful. I didn't think. Uh, I didn't think I, what's his name? Tim Donahue. I don't know who he was. I, I remember I the scandal. Guys, um, I loved it. I fucking vaguely, uh, but yeah, but the way he's just standing in front of the uh, in front of the turnbuckle. I mean, Salvio Vega, even though he's fifty six years old, he could have knocked him out of the way and said, "You're in the." But uh, I didn't like that. Uh, just and and the bad thing is this feud's not over. We're gonna get another match between the two. I mean, this feud is, is this, there's no, I thought this was going to be just be the ending of the feud. This is going to be, a, this is the blow off match and we're going to move on. But no, we're going to, we're going to get another Salvio Vega, or Richard Holiday. I don't know. Maybe they'll have a Backley brawl. <laughs> maybe we get them in a Backley brawl, uh, something, but no, just, it was just, just awful. I think Richard Holiday is, is much better than this. I think he needs to move on. I think, I, I think he needs to get a new opponent. Uh, just, I'm sorry, just. Again, no disrespect, but a 56-year-old Salvia Vega just just doesn't have it anymore. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And where was Gino Medina? He's like, I want to see Richard Holiday get whipped. So come on out and watch him get whipped. I thought he was going to – I thought the, I thought Holiday was going to win the match, and then Medina was going to come out, and he was going to attack Holiday, and then we're going to get Holiday and Medina feuding. I thought that's the way they were going to go, but no, they didn't go. This, this was just, just – Absolutely awful. I'm um, just awful, 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 awful. I'm sorry, but um, I know we were, I know we were uh, plugged by Court Bauer, but I apologize. But this was, this was awful. Uh, this was awful. I don't think he's gonna plug this show, but uh, that was, it was bad. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't like it at all. Didn't can like offer, it. At all. Can I offer a suggestion that may redeem this? Can you? Can you I, I was so upset. I was, I was so upset. I threw away my, um, my dynastic coffee mug. <laughs> no, you did it. Don't you fucking lie. Don't do that. Don't you, don't I, you I shit on dynastic. I just knocked my earphone out. Hold on one second. <laughs> He's so passionate today. It's my whole. There we go. Okay, gotcha. Right. I'm sorry. What what we say? What'd you say? All right. Give me, give me 60 seconds and you can time me if you want. Give me 60 seconds to redeem okay. how this could work. All right. Okay, go ahead. We're going to get Vega versus Holiday uh, three. That's an effort. Yeah. But. What if, what if Vega realizes he can't hang with a Richard Holiday? So what if for Vega Holiday 3, we get somebody to rep Vega? We get somebody who's looking for unfinished business. A reason why a promo was cut in the middle of the show, but he never showed up. Maybe, just maybe... We could kill two birds with one stone in this. And maybe this is the genius that is Court Bauer. Maybe we have, how do you say that guy's name? Gino? Medina. Gino Medina. Gino Medina. 
Maybe Savio Vega enlists Gino Medina to be his stand-in. Okay, listen, I can't hang with Holiday, but you have unfinished business. So let's do this. Gino Medina versus Richard Holiday for the Caribbean Championship. It'll give us two young guys in their prime, two guys who are both, you know, arrogant, selfish pricks, both guys who can hang because they know each other so well. And maybe that's where this storyline gets that redeeming factor before we have to move on. We're going to get Vega Holiday 3 anyways. Why not slide out Vega, slide in Medina? It's not that complicated to do. And they've already kind of got the wheels in motion for it by having Medina show up at the promo. Yes, he didn't show up during the match, but he showed up on the show and he cut the promo. And there's a reason why they put it in there. So maybe this is the reason. Okay, no, fair enough. That makes sense. That makes sense. And we'll see. Maybe that's the reason. I, I would have just preferred that this used to be the blow-off match because we, that we should have gotten before this whole COVID-19 um, crap hit and, and um, Medina came out and, and attacked Holiday and we would have gotten a holiday, uh, holiday Medina feud right, uh, right away without uh, Vega really being involved. But hey, no, that, that yours could work as well. Your idea could work as well. Right, but I mean, and let's not forget, yes, Vegas 56, but when they had their first match, and I went back and watched that match before I watched this match, the first match they had where Holiday stole the title, that was actually a decent match. Vega kept up with him for the most part. It was a decent match. So why this one didn't deliver? It's for obvious reasons. Excuse me, it's for obvious reasons, like you said, Lewis. Uh, Vegas 56. And he just can't hang in something like a strap match. Just not possible. So uh, kudos to Savio Vega. I mean, he's had one hell of a career, uh, you know, and he should be recognized for his achievements in this business, in this sport, and he can still cut a mean promo. Just can't deliver on the goods. It's like when you, uh, you know, you order something off the menu and you think it looks so wonderful and then you get it to bag of dog shit and you regret it three hours from later. I do that all the time when I eat a Taco Bell. I really do. Burrito grande looks great, but two hours later, I'm, regret I'm hating life. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is yep, what it is. All right. All right. So before we uh, get into our grades and we welcome our guest, which again, that was pre recorded a couple of days before we did this portion of the show. Um, Actually, before before we get into that, I'm sorry. I was reading that there might be a second MLW show. Have you have you read about that? I was reading uh, the news that they might there might be a second show. I, I did, but I didn't know we were going to address that. So this is why we should have production show meetings. I didn't know we were going to address okay. that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, I have it here. I have it written down, and I just. But we can talk about it next. We could. We could talk about it. We could. We could talk about it next week. Next week. You have. You got to start smoking more weed, please. You got to relax. Play now. I am joking. If you wanted to, I, I didn't want to discuss it because it's not a hundred percent. But yes, there's inner workings of a possible second weekly show, uh, which I am intrigued by. I just don't know. Are you okay? Are you all right, dude? Are you just? <laughs> you just say you got to start smoking more weed. <laughs> yes, <you gotta> relax. <laughs> Got to, baby. You got to. Okay, cool, cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yes. There is there is workings of a possible second weekly show. Um, I haven't read much more than that, um, just that they're working on the, on the concept. Um, but really, can they afford to do a second show based off of what the first show is doing with weeks like this? I mean, is it? Do, do we need two MLW shows right now? When they Let's get the first one polished and beautiful before we decide we need a second show. I, I agree with you 100%, and we'll leave it at that. Perfect. And what is your okay. grades for this week before we um, welcome our guest? Uh, because Just because of the first match, uh, I'm going to – I was thinking D+, plus, but I'm, I'm going to go C-. minus. I'm going to go C-. minus. No, you know what? I'm going D+. Plus, D+. Plus. The, the, if it wasn't for the first match, it would be an F, but uh, the, the, because of the first match, I'll go D+. Plus. D D as in D as in David D as in David, D plus. Perfect. Okay. I um I will go C minus because of the first match and uh, King Mo, King Mo's promo saved a lot for me. Uh, that and also Filthy Island may not happen. Sponsorships were pulled. There was a lot of tidbits <laughs> of hilarity. That keeps you wanting to come back to figure out how things are going to happen. So because sponsorships were pulled from Filthy Island, because Kick Mo wants low-key banned from wrestling, and because of that awesome first match between Kenshi and Laredo Kid, 
uh, yes, C minus. That uh, those three factors saved it for me. Oh, and also, you know, seeing TJP because he is one of my favorite cruiserweights of all time. I've had him on the show, uh, and my daughters also interviewed him as well uh, for five questions. So, uh, got to shout out TJP. He is my boy. He's a, a friend of mine, and uh, yeah, I'm always glad to see TJP out there. It just sucks that he got stuck with um, a young up comer in Dow and those two other fucking idiots from uh, uh, the Filthy Family, whatever the fuck they're called. Um, <laughs> I'm just I, violence. Violence is forever. That's 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 the name they go like. Yeah. <laughs> the, the filthy, <laughs> the filthy you know what? family. I would take Garini out of violence forever, and I'll put Bud Heavy in there because Bud Heavy is fucking entertaining. Garini is yeah, but no, I I okay, I, I'll I'll agree with you on that one. I'll agree with you. Uh, but they should put him in the in the dirty blondes. Put him in the dirty blondes is where uh, he belongs. No, I think he should be uh, Tom Lawler's uh, long lost uh, stepbrother. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bud, Bud filthy. <laughs> Amazing, Bud filthy. The eight second man, Bud <laughs> filthy. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. So that's it for this portion of the show, and we are going to fade into our wonderful pre-recorded interview, which you can actually hear. Lewis, give me shit for not introducing him. No, I'm going to add that. Did, okay, no, I was going to say, I, I, well, like you said, we got to have production meetings. I didn't, I didn't know what we were doing. You you went right into the interview. I was like, uh, are you going to edit it out or are you going to leave it in? I, I don't know yet. It's undecided. You'll have to find out. Okay, how because, because, because the, the story is, I didn't know what you were doing. We were doing the interview. You just went right into the questions. I'm like, I'm thinking, why hasn't he introduced me? So I was like, oh, thanks a lot for introducing me, George. I appreciate it. And then he's like, Lewis, Lewis, this is. We're, do uh, we're doing, we're, we're going to be doing an, uh, uh, the show, and then I'm going to introduce you there and edit this in, you idiot. I'm like, oh, I'm so <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. Much like MLW, we're going to announce the second show, but you guys won't see it. It's going to be called the production meeting of MLW Rewind. We're going to do that before we do the MLW Rewind, so we're all on the same page. Is that fair to you, sir? Yeah, that's that sounds good. That sounds good. Man. Perfect. So that the MLW, MLW production meeting will air weekly. Uh, oh, sorry, will be unaired weekly, and it'll be on right before MLW Rewind. So people will know we had a production meeting beforehand. And you know what we'll start doing? We'll just start tweeting, production meeting, and people will know. <laughs> They'll know <laughs> what happened. All right. As, uh, as always, guys, I'm your host, your boy, Rex. Don't, 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 want, uh, oh, don't want Tabby Cat to get upset. <laughs> I Listen, I said I said I would address it. And I did. So I hope. No, I'm gonna say I, I I don't want him to get upset that uh, I'm getting upset that you haven't introduced me when when you introduced me in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'll be fine, Tabby Cat. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. I did enjoy the fact that we did address it, and I do agree with you in some small part. It's not as passionate as you were about it, but I do agree with you about it 100. And, and and I will say I will say Tabby Cat. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I appreciate that you're listening to the show. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm just joking. So so relax, okay? Thanks. All right. Uh, and and I'm gonna say Tabby Cat. I told Lewis to smoke more weed. He smoked yeah, a little bit. And, uh, he smoked a lot more. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. Let's welcome our guest, Lee Shell, to the show. Enjoy that interview, guys. And as always, MLW airs weekly on Wednesdays, and we'll shout out our socials at the end of the show in that interview. Peace, love, and wrestling, guys. Thank you so much, Lewis. Say goodbye. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy the interview. All right, guys, the time is at hand. Please help us welcome this week's guest to MLW Rewind, the one, the only, interview queen, Alicia Atut. Welcome to MLW Rewind. How are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm super psyched about this. I'm going to talk about my favorite wrestling company. It's going to be fun, super fun. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's three great Canadians having a conversation <laughs> about the sport we all love immensely. So it's a perfect storm. Uh, my first question out the gate, um, being the interview queen, it comes with a lot of haters, both public, like Selena, Valorenta, and private. They might DM you yes. cowardly or do other things like that. How are you dealing or how do you deal with these so-called keyboard warriors? 
honestly, I have the mentality of love me or hate me, still an obsession. It's always good or bad press. It's still press. So I really just try to take every good and bad comment and, you know, just water off a duck's back and I'll let it get to you. Because if you take the good comments to heart too much, then your ego goes insane. And then if you take the negative comments to heart, uh, you could start feeling really crappy about yourself. So I just try to take a step back, remember the reason why, why I am where I am. And, uh, you know, just really understand that their comments don't matter at all. 100%. I love the answer. Can, can we see your monkey name monkey? I thought that was the cutest thing during oh the interview. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> he's, he's right on my bed. I have him all right. and Big Bird. Big Bird from when oh, I was a child. Oh, let's see Big Bird too. Let's see Big Bird too. Oh, There's monkey. monkey name monkey. Cutest thing. Yeah. So that's Couldn't... monkey. And then I have Big Bird over here. And I'm telling you guys in that interview when I showed monkey for a millisecond, she showed that she is a human being. And um, we were getting along. <laughs> there we go awesome awesome yep. stuff man I, I i i said i have to get an appearance by monkey named monkey and we got big bird too so that that's fantastic right two so one. so um on to on to selena so if you two actually do meet up in the ring uh, are you worried about someone like mil muertes possibly interfering and if so do you have somebody in mind that could watch your back as well so honestly, uh, if we ever did meet in the ring, which is honestly what it is kind of looking like it might come to be, um, we've all watched her matches. We've seen some of her customs. She is terrible. So I'm not worried about it. I've literally never stepped foot into a ring before. I've never taken a bump. I've never ran a rope. But I'm fairly confident that going one-on-one -on -one against her, any other wrestler, I'd be pretty out of my element. But her, I could take her. As far as her bringing in somebody else, I know a lot of people in this industry a lot of people and we're like this and they all don't like her so i'm fairly certain that if she was you know gonna bring in anyone from her stable wolf parks bring in la park bring in mill i know that i have a lot of people in my corner that would be able to take them down no problem okay all right there you go um alicia you stated from day one that the first time you met her the first interaction you had she had a chip on her shoulder um, yes. I agree that there was something there for sure. I'm not sure if it was intimidation, like that might have been mentioned during the interview that you guys had. Um, any other factors that you could think of that it might have been? Everything that, like, I've been very public about things that have happened, and I've been kind of just hitting my brain over and over thinking, did I do something to really rub her the wrong way? And when I thought about that question, the answer is no. I treat everyone in locker rooms with respect. If I don't get along with someone, there's no bad blood. We're just not going to be besties and, you know, you do your job and that's that. You don't like everyone in life, you know what I mean? So, you know, but from the jump, I introduced myself to her at indie shows. She was a bit of a snob. I had her on my vlogs a few times. She was smiling. She was okay, but always a little bitchy and there was just something up and then as soon as we actually started working together in mlw that is when i just realized wow she really doesn't like me and i don't understand why and being the kind of person i am i was like well i wonder why you know i was like tj from disney's recess like you want everyone to to like you because i've never had this problem before so i had to figure it out and i still haven't she just says she hates everything about me which isn't really the best of answers but you know i uh I'm determined to try to get her on my side just because I know there's like a shimmer of her that really likes me. She just doesn't want to admit it. So I am ready to uh, show the world a different side of Selena. And I'm hoping it's one that I don't despise because I would like to have a nice locker room. You know, it's amazing aside from her and Holiday. So, I mean, it would just be, <laughs> it would be nice to get along with everyone. I'm not trying to be a people pleaser. It would just make my life easier and less stress. I wouldn't have to worry about waking up, searching my phone, and she's already bashed me in the morning. I just want a simple life, you know? It's not that much to ask for. And on that note, I think my cohort has a question about Mr. Holiday. Oh, Lewis. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, but I actually was going to save it, but uh, you brought it up, so I'm going to – I'll uh... – I'll ask the holiday question. So I know you had a few unpleasant um, experiences uh, with uh, Richard Holiday. So are you, what what is your opinion on Richard Holiday now? And uh, do you still feel uh, the same way you did about him a few months ago? Oh, yeah. I, I don't like him at all. He's pompous. He's egotistical. I hate those stupid AirPods. It's like, bro, you don't need him in 24-7. Like, it's, it's him. It's so annoying. And the fact that he just talks down to me, it's like the whole Selena thing. It's like, why, dude? 
I see him getting along with other people. I'm like, what did I do to you? So I don't get why he's such an a-hole, but uh, that's someone I don't care to get along with. I don't think we're ever going to see eye to eye. I've never seen a sliver of kindness in him. So yeah, I think we're always just going to butt heads on everything. And his lawyer slash father is such a douche. I never want to hear that again from him, like ever. I'm so tired of hearing about his stupid dad. So you're not going to be getting a dynastic coffee mug then? Hell no. And if he ships me one, okay. I'll bash it. I'll send him a beautiful <laughs> boomerang of it just hitting the concrete and it's back together. And it's hitting the concrete and it's back together. Okay. All right. So go ahead, Holiday. Send, send me a mug. That, that is amazing. <laughs> I will take a mug as well, but I won't smash it. I'll drink out of it proudly. Um, but uh, that's another side note. So uh, there was a couple of times in your interview where there was there was sincere moments with Selena. Even like you said, when you showed us Monkey, there was 100% sincere moments, almost like it was kind of like two friends that hadn't seen each other in forever. Like, hey, you remember this one when I was a kid? But I, and then she flipped. Do you think it's because this has been such a public display of hatred from her that if she were to flip on camera and you were to catch it, that all of a sudden, all the credibility she's had would disappear? Totally. It's completely out the window, and I think she's put on such a front to everyone, from friends to locker rooms to fans, that even if they saw her for more than a second just actually being human and caring about someone, especially someone she's publicly bashed day in and day out for, what, a week, week and a half now, I genuinely think people would be like, wow, like, what's the real, is this the real Selena? Was that all fake? Were you lying to us the whole time? All credibility is completely out the window, completely. So I think she's scared, and I think that's why she's, been avoiding it. I'm trying to get her back on my show again because she ended the interview abruptly right as we saw her kind of being nice, kind of, you know, enjoying my company. So I'm trying to get her back on, just being like, yo, this is the footage, girl. Like, clearly there's something here. I'm down to repair stuff. That's the whole reason this fight started. I was down to repair things. She publicly shared our messages, which is not cool. Those are personal. And I just, I really do think deep down she wants to be friends, but she doesn't want to admit it. Shameful. And you must be a glutton for punishment. Good for you to try to get her back on the show, but you must be a glutton for punishment. I'm sorry. It's interesting because a lot of her insults, they just don't penetrate. They just don't hurt because I know deep down she's so insecure about herself that she has no choice but to make fun of me in those super harsh ways. So tweet as many up-close pictures of me I want. I'm not going to defend them because there's nothing wrong with them, girl. Like, I have no issue. So if that's what she wants to do, she can come at me as much as she wants. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not worried. I'm really not. Absolutely love it. Okay. Actually, I want to go back to Holiday for a second. Uh, I know a few months ago he was threatening you with a lawsuit. Whatever became of that, and are you still concerned about that lawsuit? Not at all. Everything that he says is BS. It just goes in one ear out the other. He loves threatening things. He loves saying he's going to do things. But the funniest thing about Holiday is he does not have the balls to actually do anything. He's parading around this championship that he has that literally isn't even his. You know, like, I hope everything that goes down soon between him and Savio, that he just gets the shit beat out of him because that is what he deserves. Finally, he does not deserve that championship. And that's why I always start our interviews with self-proclaimed because no one else has, has claimed that he's the champ. I hope he never becomes champ. He doesn't deserve it. Okay. Right. All right. A lot. So um, this is kind of a two-part question. The first part is, um, in the interview that you guys did, there was a lot of body shaming on her part. Body shaming was a big part of the interview from her side of stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, in, in this day and age, in a, as a society, I thought we would have grown more and become better human beings. But we have right. a long way to go. Now, Selena and some fans were attacking certain parts of your body. Did it right. you? And the second part to the question is, with all these interviews you've done, has there been anybody else that has come to you with this much animosity aside from Selena and Richard Holliday? Right. So um, as for the first part, I was genuinely surprised that that stuff came out and that so many fans are coming behind her and rallying behind her, especially all of these like grown men who just want to destroy a 20-something body. Like it's, it's honestly really repulsive to me. But I don't care what they have to say. When I first started this site, I was 16 years old. I'm 25 now, so I heard everything. I take any part of my body head to toe. Someone has destroyed it. Someone has said it's hideous. I've heard it all. And then I just realized, you know, I wouldn't be on TV all the time. I wouldn't be working for the biggest and the best over my years and, in, in, you know, doing what I do if, whether it's a personality thing or a looks thing, like if, if these comments 
has some valid validity. So it's one of those things where you just have to let it roll off and just think they must be really lonely and sad to have to go after someone like that. You would, like you mentioned, you would really think that this isn't something that would happen. So that's, that's just been frustrating. And then um, the other part, I mean, the people that have kind of come at me in a similar way in the past would um, probably be MJF and then Scarlett Bordeaux. Those two, we did not get along well at all. Uh, Scarlett and I was more of a frenemy situation, so there's not as much bad blood now. Things are kind of okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Selena's definitely by far, by far the worst. Well, she's, just a, she's just a really crappy human being. Like, sh she really is. I'm a proud girl dad. And um, when that happened, and me and my daughter, the interview princess, you you know her very well. When oh, she's so cute. Uh, when we watched that, uh, she was like, Dad, what is this girl's problem? I'm like, well, honey, unfortunately, you're going to come across these bridges too. And the one thing yeah. you can do is rise above it because, I mean, you're beautiful, just like mom, and fuck anybody else. And you also have my right hook. So if anybody comes at you, just one shot, one shot. And your daughter's a lot younger than I was when I started. And my dad told me the same thing. He's like, I love you girls. It's my sister, like my house is my sister, my mom, dad, and I. And I remember when I was that age, he was like, I love you. And my mom would say the same thing. He's like, my, every girl in this family is gorgeous. Like you'd have nothing to worry about. And it was less about the looks and needing to actually be told I was like, good looking and all that like it had nothing to do with that it was just when you read comment after comment people destroying things like I didn't realize that a toe could be ugly I didn't realize that an eyebrow could offend someone so bad you know what I mean like people just really blow things out of proportion online so when I was younger it did get to me because that's when you're building confidence and kind of becoming a woman like you're still a girl and you're kind of figuring out who you are but now it's just if you don't like me I don't care because I have tons of people who do and I'm grateful for those who do 100%. I'm one of them. Team, team Alicia all the way. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I, was always, I was always curious on, on, on what led you to sign with MLW and um, why did you choose MLW? Yeah, so at the time, it was ooh, December 2019 when I signed. I, I still keep writing down 2020. It's driving me crazy. But anyways, uh, it was December 2019 when I signed, and I was in talks with a couple other companies. And you know how it can be. You're waiting for answers. Sometimes you get strung along. Sometimes things are a done deal, and then they're not. And they approached me at a time where I was kind of in talks with a few, and they were like, hey, we'd really love to fly you out to our tapings in New York. Let's just see how things go. And, you know, we, we'd like you to be an interviewer for that show. And I was like, dope, this is a booking. It could be a one-off. Like, this is great. Uh, let's, let's try it. And then my first day there, literally within the first four hours of being there, I was pulled aside by one of my bosses now. And he said, hey, the vibe is great. You're doing an amazing job. You live up to everything. We've heard about you. So would you like to actually be our backstage interviewer? We, we literally want to sign you, like, ASAP. Let's talk numbers. And in my head, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I never even thought that was like a full possibility with them. And it just, I kind of told them like, hey, let's see how the weekend goes. This is a big decision. Let me just play out these couple of days and see how I feel. And it just felt right. The locker room is so fun. I knew so many of the guys from being on the indies with them. So mm -hmm. it just kind of felt like, oh my gosh, my friends are here. Uh, crew was amazing. They were efficient. I, I, like, I like companies where when you show up, they know what they're doing. I've been with a couple where it's just a complete shit show backstage and you're like, why am I just sitting on my ass? Like, I came here to work. Like, I, I hate when it's not productive. And they just had all their ducks in a row. And it was flawless. Court was great. I actually felt like, what a genuine guy. And you do not get that all the time in this business. So it just felt right. And the next thing I know, uh, it was two and a half weeks after those tapings, I put pen to paper and I signed my first wrestling contract. So, yeah, it was crazy. Right. I was always, I was, because you did work for Impact Wrestling. How do you compare MLW with Impact Wrestling? Honestly, when it came to Impact, I was a lot more fresh and green, so I felt like I was kind of more just behind the scenes, being kind of told what to do, didn't have much in, in terms of creative, and I, you know, kind of learned how to be a backstage interviewer, where with MLW, I have tons of creative freedom, I can give ideas, I'm not really looked at like, you know, like, no one looks down on you if you pitch something. Usually your ideas are taken and we roll with them. Um, there are a lot of storylines even that happen that you have such an integral part in and you never thought you would just because you spoke your mind and they loved your idea. So I like that I don't have to hold anything back when I'm there. Like, it's, it's just a really positive vibe. And they're so efficient. 
Like it is a well-oiled machine. And like I said before, I need that. I just need to show up and actually, you know, if I'm told I'm going to do something, I want to do it. And I, I love that about them. So yeah, I feel like I was like younger with impact. So I also didn't have it in me to want to like speak up as much, even though I didn't try it. Whereas with MLW, it wasn't like I walked in hot shit, but I walked in like, okay, I know what I bring to the table. I feel like they can actually benefit from me and vice versa. So I'm going to speak my mind. And luckily they appreciate that. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good, good vibe there. All right. Well, you're doing a fantastic job. Keep up the great work, Alicia. Thank you. I try. <laughs> you, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. A couple of times back in the Selena situation, because this is a hot butt issue, and yeah. uh, PSA drops, it's actually going to be one week anniversary from your interview with Selena dropping. So uh, we definitely want to make sure that your side of things gets told as quickly as we possibly can so that everyone can hear your side. Uh, a couple of times in that interview, you yourself did kind of take the low road with both Selena and her minions. Now, were those moments of just complete exhaustion, or was it frustration and exhaustion? Because at this Honestly, point, you're just so tired of her. Yeah, it got to the point where from her, I was just hearing lie after lie, whether it was bashing my interviewing skills, my body, my fans who were at, like, you've seen my fans being retweeted in, in your feed. They're so supportive and kind. And everything she said about me was a lie. Even her tweets, I went back and looked at the people's names. And if it was like, why does she love you so much? It was literally the other way around. So she shifted almost every part of that interview as a lie and everything I said even when it got heated out of frustration out of exhaustion out of just being pissed at her everything I said was true she's a shitty human being her fans follow her like it's a cult they're extremely rude and idiotic those are all facts so I didn't feel like I was just going off to be an asshole on my end I was defending myself and not making things up on her end every single thing was made up aside from hi I'm Selena whereas when it came to what I had to say I was just speaking the truth and I don't regret it at all. When you're getting talked to like that, you got to stand up for yourself. And I did bite my tongue. You probably saw me a lot trying to say stuff and then just being like, nope, you know what? I'm not going to say something I regret. But she says a lot of stuff that she she's going to regret. It's going to come back to bite her in the ass because karma's a real bitch. And uh, I can't wait for the day that it just hits her hard. Absolutely. Karma, much like rejection, can be a very fickle woman. Both both sides. 100%. <laughs> right? 100%. Lewis? <laughs> How awkward is it going to be at the next set of TV tapings when you're face to face with Selena? Not at That's all. That's going to be pretty awkward. I, feel like, I don't nope. think so because I feel like she's going to have no choice but to listen. She can't hit a little button. She can't be a keyboard warrior and just tweet what she wants. She's going to actually have to hear me out. And I have a lot of guys in that locker room who are like brothers to me who aren't going to tolerate that shit from her. So I'm 100% ready and waiting to be face to face with this woman. You can even call her that. She's a sorry excuse of a human. And I'm really excited to see her and be like, yo, let's talk this out because clearly you like me and we're going to get to the bottom. You don't have to be besties, girl, but you got to stop lying to yourself because it's not helping anyone. It's making her look like a real dumbass. What about Court Bauer? Is, is he, uh, has he talked to you about this feud? Has he, is he going to have a conference call with you two and say, hey, guys, let's, let's cool it? Uh, how, how does he feel about this whole feud that's going on? I feel like just like everyone in the locker room, he would like for us to get along. But if we didn't have confrontation within our company, we wouldn't even have matches. So I think in his yeah. eyes, he's thinking, you know what? They don't get along. I can't really do much about it. So I'll just kind of let them go at it and we'll see what happens. And we both told him, like, you know what? If she's fine with it, I'm fine with it. And we all just agreed, you know what? We'll just go about what we're doing because... I don't think it's going to stop. And if we don't get some kind of anger out, it's not going to end well. Like, it's not. So we, we, I know in social media, I know in some people's eyes, it might be childish to be arguing online. But honestly, what other advice do we have, especially in this worldwide pandemic? So she's not going to confront me in personal messages and she wants to share it out with the world. I'm going to air it all out. Okay. Sounds good. Fair enough. Another two-part question here for you, uh, Alicia. So on the weekend, I myself went at her for proof that you were that you paid her to come on the show. I asked right. her for proof. And did she get it? Of course not. No, she didn't. She she actually tweeted back to me saying she used her dad's credit card. To which, at that point, I retweeted with just the eye rolling emoji um, right. because you're going to sit there and state something. Either show it, show it to all of us. Just a snapshot of the PayPal of you transferring money to her. Because even if it wasn't someone else's credit card, you'd still have the payment info, bitch. Like, duh. 
these exactly. excuses don't stop. Exactly. So I went at her 100% for you and, and respect for that. But what is your response to that nonsense about that you would pay her to be on the show? And the second part of the question, since then, you were actually, actually, even on a Sunday, you're relatively quiet on social media with all the shit that was going on. Why? Why would you, why would you be so, I mean, I get it. You're a lot more classier than she is, but right. why are you so quiet on the Sunday compared to all the other shenanigans that were going on? And what are your thoughts about the proof of payment that she never showed? Right. Well, you just said it right there. She didn't show it. So there's obviously nothing that happened. Because if you had those cold, hard facts, I know I'd show it within a second. Like, hey, this is literally it. She she wants to show everything off. She wants to show close-ups of my face. She wants to take photos of me with my mouth open, half interviewing. Like, she wants to do everything she can to put it all out there. But she won't put something out that she has proof for makes no sense so clearly that was a complete lie i would never i've never paid to have a single guest on my show and if i wanted a guest on my show do you really think i'd pay selena de la renta like come on I do. so now yeah, so that did not happen as far as sunday goes something that this chick doesn't seem to understand is the fact that she might just be able to sit around all day i know she says she acts and she sings and she's so busy but she literally can always retweet something within a second. She can always reply back within a second. She doesn't get that. I actually have a busy life. On Sunday, I had two interviews. I had a podcast. I had a fan Skype. I had a bunch of Patreon stuff to do. And right now I'm going through a bunch of health things that I got to figure out. So I figured, you know what? I don't need to clap back all the time. And then with a single tweet, I think at the end of the night, I destroyed her. I sent out this little gif of me winding up a middle finger and it fucking got the most traction any of every single tweet she's ever sent to me this one tweet got more traction than anything she's ever posted so it just goes to show who who people are actually rooting for and um her paid useless followers can all just take a hike so i, I love that gif it's actually in my keyboard and i've used it on a couple of my friends regularly so i, I do love that i think it's fantastic i really, really i appreciate it <laughs> Yeah, and I know a lot of people have been retweeting it as well. So that's a that's a great gift that you put up there. Thank you. I I posted it not expecting much. I I literally was doing a photo shoot, and um I had something come through from her a tweet, and I was like, oh my god, this bitch is at it again. Like I just wish I could just run up to her in the hallway and just give her a little finger. And I was like, you know what? I can't do that. I can virtually give her one. So I was like, let's just be cheeky. And luckily, people loved it and they hated her. So. Mwah. <laughs> All right, so so what are your thoughts on the Von Erichs uh, losing the titles to Los Parts with Selena? Was Selena getting heavily involved? I know Tom Lawler uh, was involved as well, but she uh, sprayed mace in, um, in their faces. So how do you feel about them losing the titles? It's so corrupt, and it breaks my heart because those two are like locker room bros. Like they're, they're always doing their own thing because they have matches to – go through and everything and they have to figure out how they're going to have a game plan to go against horrible people and while they're doing that you know I'm just thinking like yes they will retain they're such good guys like they're the best and then that happens it, it doesn't help they have Lawler who's been a shifty mofo from the jump then you end up having uh, as you mentioned the mace thing went down I'm like this is not fair like they are such great champs they have dignity, they have the talent, and they have the charisma to carry those titles. And it just broke my heart. It really did. And I know it broke theirs, too, because they're just, they're fan-oriented, they're family-oriented, and I just wanted them to, to continue, you know, with that with that legacy. So I really hope that uh, at some point soon they can get them back, because I really do think that they just, when I think of MLW Take Team Champions, I think of the Von Eriks and no one else. So hopefully they'll be able to get them back. Well, that hopefully they will get them back. They will be, uh, they will regain those titles soon. I hope so. I do. Me too. I got my fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, Alicia, <laughs> this will be my last question because the wonderful world of Zoom has us limited to only a few more minutes. So on the previous week in MLW, you stated that you would get to the bottom of things and find out whom Selena is working for. Are yes. you talking about as to whom owns Azteca Inc. or whom is higher than her in terms of Promociones Dorado? And the second part to this question, who do you think owns Azteca Inc.? Yeah, so at first, I was trying to get to the bottom of both, honestly. And that was before 
most of this stuff started to heat up as bad as it is. So now she won't return a DM, a text, a call, even though she'll publicly respond to me, she doesn't reply to anything. So I don't know if I'll have to wait until I find something out over a forced Zoom call because MLW, like that thing that happened uh, on last week's Fusion, if MLW didn't orchestrate that, there's no way she would have picked up that call. So unless it's something they put together, I uh, honestly don't know how soon I'll get to the bottom of it. But being the kind of journalist I am, I will figure it out. And then as far as the second part to your question, it's kind of difficult to figure out who it is. For a while, I was trying to get under her skin and make her think that I was the one who was going to be her boss. Like I pulled something real shifty. And I'm not saying that that still didn't happen. But um, in terms of people I think could like it could be I really don't know I feel like she's trying to make it seem like she's innocent and she's not super on board but I really think that she had a huge hand in orchestrating this and she's known for a very long time so whoever it is I'm sure that MLW fans would be very surprised I actually called that I figured that you and Conan were actually in cahoots to buy Promociones Dorado I I did call that but I mean you didn't say yes but you didn't say no so I'm thinking maybe I got it right Fingers crossed, we'll see as the weeks progress. Lewis? Right. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned to MLW Fusion, everyone. <laughs> All right. Actually, guys, I had two questions left. Do I have time for two questions, George? Well, Lewis, let's try to make them quick. But yeah, you should, buddy. You should. <laughs> okay. I actually, I have a two-part question. One, how do you handle the 14-day quarantine when you come back from the MLW TV tapings? And who do you think is going to dethrone Jacob for two? Ooh, okay. So first off, I know I gotta zoom through these. So 14-day uh, quarantine sucks. Uh, I've done it quite a few times now since the pandemic, but hey, it's the law, so it's the only way for me to travel and come back. So I literally stayed in my room. I did not leave it, aside from going to the loo and the backyard. You weren't even allowed to go walk around the park. So uh, I read a lot of books. I binge watched a lot of television, and I just tried to keep my sanity. I video called my family a lot, and you know, you just do what you can. And then as soon as I was done, I was like, freedom. And then we had a province wide uh, stay at home order. So, you know, it is a pandemic. So I was going to go out and party or anything. That's not my vibe. But yeah, so it's his life. And as far as Jacob okay. Tattoo goes, honestly, and it's not that I'm for the dynasty or anything, because, you know, but I really have this weird feeling that Hammer is going to be the one to take that, that championship. When you look at it, I feel like having these two monsters in their own right going head to head is just going to be such a fascinating match. And I've had Contra destroy interviews of mine and I've had the dynasty destroy interviews of mine. So it's not like I really care who wins out of the two or who has it, but part of me really does feel like Hammer would have a really interesting run and you could have some really great main event matchups with him. So just looking at pure skill and not personality, I think, uh, I think he has a good chance at, at taking that baby home. Okay, you're going to get upset with me, but I'm, I'm thinking Richard Holiday has a very good shot as well. No! So that's... Okay. What the f***? What are you talking about? No. No. He can't even hold a championship that he doesn't actually even have and tout that properly. You want to put that much, that much metal on him? No. No. He's a little wimp. He's a little bitch. He doesn't deserve anything. Okay. Uh, I, I think he'd be a pretty no. good champion. I think he'd be a pretty good champion. Ew. Okay, no. okay, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. I, I, I won't say anymore. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, well, you know what? Right. I, before we wrap it up, I do got to tell you, if you watched last week's MLW Rewind, I kind of came up with a cool concept of my own as to a budding rivalry between uh, Contra and Azteca Inc. or Promocios Dorado, as we were to call it now. Um, I basically said that it looks like down the line we could be steamrolling these two in together because they're making Mo Mortis to be unstoppable. And Jacob Fatu is already unstoppable. So I could see these two factions lining up for a war of epic proportions, in my opinion. And Lewis got very excited, like a kid on Christmas that finally got his favorite toy. And when Lewis was a kid, the toys were all wooden, and they had to be, like, hammered and stuff. Yeah. No, that's okay. a very interesting okay, point. Thanks, and Th thanks a lot, George. <laughs> I've had a lot of fans tweet my way saying, <laughs> hey, we think that the Dynasty needs – some more backbone we think that they need someone like you and maybe put your differences aside from how much you hate holiday and you have your differences with hammer and uh, let your hatred for selena rise above that and maybe something can happen there so a lot of people are putting that out into the world 
I'm not sure how I feel teaming up with an enemy to defeat an enemy, but I'm not saying I dislike it by any means. So we'll have to see what happens, but um, I just want Selena to go down. So I'm kind of willing to do anything in order for that to happen. Well, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's the quote. Right. That's the yeah. saying. So, ew, I don't want him to be my ew. No, I don't like that. Not, I don't want to be anywhere near him. Holiday. The only one here who likes Holiday is Lewis. But, like, not Holiday. I'm saying maybe even teaming up with Contra to take down Promosio and Mr. Rada if that comes before. I'm just saying keep your options open because you could be the puppet master making a lot of people dance if you choose to. Oh, but trust we'll, me, save that. we'll save that for part two when we have you back on the show. Alicia, right. it's been absolute what, what about Bud Heavy? What about Bud Heavy? What about Bud Heavy? He has a shot. Oh, no. <laughs> George? George Bud Heavy has a shot. Like, bro, we're about to run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know all about the quick Zoom wrap-up. I've been there. <laughs> okay, so quickly, think, Alicia, yeah, we got about six minutes, six minutes. What do you think about Bud Heavy? We had him on the show last week. He's a great guy, an awesome yeah. dude. I, we called him, we nicknamed him the eight second man because that's how long he lasted with Loki. He took it like a champ. He loved it. He appreciated it. But what's your thoughts on Bud Heavy? I mean, when you're going against someone like Key, unless you've really, really, really been in that ring with like a ton of people and you've had your fair share of wins, he's really skilled. Like he can wrap you up like a pretzel. So no offense to Bud, but I don't. I don't know if he really stood a chance going into that one. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for stating the opposite. Thank you very much. <laughs> Greatest yeah. guy in the world, though. What a gem of a human being, but heavy is the nicest dude ever. And he was so genuine with the both of us. But I called that. And Lewis knew that. Right. So. Yeah, no. He's a, he's a great guy. It was great to have him on, man. Yeah, it was. All right, so Alicia, thank you very much for being on the show. And now I'm going to outro Lewis because the reason I didn't intro Lewis was because... We're going to tie this into our rewind, but I guess Lewis had to air his grievances out. So thank you, Lewis, <laughs> for being my co-host and my podcast life partner. Alicia, before we oh, go, just... do us a huge favor because you are an absolutely amazing person. Before we shout out our socials and you do, if you could just look at the camera and give us some of that Alicia Altitude intensity and let them know they're watching MLW Rewind. Hey everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Atu here, and you are currently watching MLW Rewind. Keep you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And now, for anybody who's stupid enough not to be following you, where can they find yeah. you on the wonderful world of social media? Before I let Lewis have his moment and share his socials, then I'll share mine. Absolutely. If you guys aren't following me yet, please type up Alicia Tu in your good old Google boxes, and there you'll find my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, along with my YouTube channel, where there are literally thousands and thousands of videos with musicians, wrestlers, and bodybuilders. I love chatting with my fans, especially if you are hashtag Team Alicia, and uh, I really just appreciate the support. And thank you so much to you two, uh, before you give your shameless self-plugs, for having me on today. Absolutely. There's no one else we would have chose to have on because you are the queen. Lewis, now is your time to shine, sir. Go ahead. We'll all be quiet. Thanks. Hush. Thank you. Falls over the crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll just make this quick. I know we have to hurry up. So uh, Instagram, it's Alliance PW Network. Uh, Twitter, at Shooting Up North. Facebook, Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Hit that uh, like button. YouTube, Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Head on over there. Hit that subscribe button, please. Okay, it's your turn now, uh, George. Go ahead, buddy. Well, to make it quick, because I'm so smooth with my sexy radio voice on Facebook and on Instagram, you can find me at Straight Talk Wrestling. On Twitter, at underscore Straight Talk. And on YouTube, Straight Talk Wrestling. Like Lewis said, hit the subscribe button. A new episode of MLW Rewind drops every Sunday, and we share it on both our pages as well as, as, well as all audio podcast platforms. And if you check my page, you can see the wonderful interview I did with Alicia for my 100th episode before she got signed to MLW. You can also catch this interview with all previous episodes of MLW Rewind. And you can also catch the future of podcasting. My little interview princess, my daughter, who also has an interview with Alicia. Alicia, thank She's you so, so much. She is. She is. Gorgeous. She is thank gorgeous. you, guys. She looks like her mom. Thank God. She looks like her mom. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go enjoy the rest of your evening. As always, guys, I'm your host, and you know my podcast life partner, Lewis Carlin, and as well our amazing guest, Lee Shell, too. Thank you very much, and we'll see everybody next week. Peace. Bye, guys. Bye.